How are you doing, you wonderful nerds? Scott here. I'm traveling again for the holidays, which means it's voiceover only today. But thanks to all the new subscribers that we got from the collab we did over at Variant Comics. If you haven't seen it, it's a lot of fun. We asked if Flash could be fast enough to deliver all of the presents on Christmas like Santa. I won't ruin it, but there will be a link in the description below. But at the end of that video, I came to this conclusion. Yeah. Maybe the kids getting coal are better off on this one. And that notion actually got my gears turning a little bit. It reminded me of all the times we've seen in movies and cartoons and even the comics themselves of Superman taking coal and crushing it into diamond. And I wanted to know if that was possible, you know, just for fun, not because I got coal for Christmas or anything. I'm good. So let's say hypothetically, of course, that you got coal for Christmas. Could you count on the Man of Steel crushing it into a shiny, shiny diamond? To figure out if this is possible, we first must understand what even is a diamond. And I know that sounds silly, most of us know what a diamond is, we, we've seen what it looks like, but what is it? The answer is very simple. Carbon. A diamond is just a pure carbon substance. But so what? A lot of stuff is made up of carbon. The graphite in your pencil, for example, is also a pure carbon substance, but very clearly different from diamond. So how can we have these two substances that are made up of the same stuff and yet vastly different from one another? The answer lies in the molecular structure of the carbon atoms. Carbon is capable of forming many different allotropes that have vastly different properties. For example, graphite, again, is very opaque and and uh, brittle, which makes it really great for writing or drawing, but probably not super great for engagement rings. I mean, you probably find someone who will dig it. The structure of diamond, however, is this dense cubic shape that makes it transparent and incredibly hard. And so, of course, natural diamonds are formed deep beneath the Earth's surface, some hundred miles or so below, thanks to incredibly high pressure and temperature. Two things that Superman easily has on a lockdown. He's got his heat vision, right? Don't say it's laser vision, it's heat vision, everybody. And, of course, his massive amounts of strength, which, you know, obviously fluctuate depending on which writer of the comic or movie or TV show. But, but he's super, he's real strong, guys. He's real strong. Look at, look at how strong he is. Wow. That's pretty strong. But there is one other major factor, and that is... Time. Yes, diamonds take a long time to form, somewhere between a hundred million to even billions of years. I don't know how patient you guys are, but I'm not. So, I, not that I have coal, but if I did, you know, can't wait that long. But wait a minute, Scott, I hear you typing. We're not talking about natural diamonds, we're talking about man-made diamonds, or Kryptonian-made diamonds. I was getting to that, literally, right now. So scientists have been able to make diamonds in laboratories for some time now. One of the methods they use is called HPHT, which stands for High Pressure, High Temperature, because scientists are creative. As the name suggests, this process aims to simulate the environment that diamonds are naturally formed in, only, you know, under more controlled circumstances and a lot quicker. Huge plot hole uh, that I'm sure a lot of you guys have noticed by this point is that neither the process for forming natural diamonds nor synthetic diamonds uses coal. Diamonds created in laboratories are formed using graphite, again, your pencil lead. Turns out that uh, graphite and diamond are actually really close to one another, both being pure carbon substances. Coal, on the other hand, is far from a pure carbon substance. Sure, it has a lot of carbon, absolutely, but it also has a ton of impurities. Anywhere between, you know, 10% to 50% is not carbon, and that makes it a really bad substance to try and make diamonds out of. Coal can be traced back to dead plant matter that has undergone biological and geological processes over millions of years. It could contain variable amounts of really anything from oxygen, uh, hydrogen, sulfur, nitrogen, some organic matter, you name it. But hey, impurities aren't always a bad thing when it comes to diamonds. In fact, many colored diamonds occur because of impurities. A boron impurity, for example, can make a diamond blue. Nitrogen can make them yellow. And a lot of times these diamonds go for way higher prices than regular diamonds do because of how rare they are. However, those impurities exist on a scale of about one in every million atoms, and coal is a lot worse off than that. If you hand Superman a stocking full of coal, best case scenario, he can make some real low-grade diamonds that really aren't gonna fetch you much. More realistic scenario, he's just gonna hand you back a fistful of black powder. The good news is if you have an aunt or a grandma that gave you a pack of pencils for Christmas, now we're in business. 
I hope you wonderful nerds enjoyed your holiday. I have two little things that I have to say uh, before this video ends, if you will indulge me. Number one is thank you. Thank you to everyone who watched our videos last year in 2017. Uh, to all of the new subscribers that we got, we sure did get a lot of you guys. All of the old subscribers who stuck with us through some trying times, for sure. Uh, all of the people who joined the notification squad who write comments as soon as videos go live. I love you guys. Uh, and especially all of our patrons. We have a ton of people. Normally I only highlight a couple of their names, but I think I want to do something over here. Andrew, can we get scrolling? credits of everyone who's a patron right now uh, regardless of how much they're pledging I just want to highlight all of these wonderful nerds all these beautiful people over here uh, it's gonna be a lot of names so I might have to scroll fast so I will talk quickly the last thing that I wanted to talk about was we had a big final video released just before Christmas it's all about the Star Wars holiday special the history behind that an alternate draft that was kind of hidden and tucked away uh, we spent a ton of time researching and editing and, and writing that one so uh, it got buried because of the holidays obviously so if you haven't seen it it'll be linked in the description down below please do check it out we spent a ton of time on it um, and if you have seen it uh, then go uh, share it around with your favorite online communities that would be super awesome it's I think it's sitting at about 30,000 views right now I would love to double that uh, <laughs> within the next week or so if possible anyway I think that's everything I have to say uh, I look forward to all the great stuff we're gonna make for you guys all the all the great stuff that you guys are gonna help us make this year in 2018 uh, so until the next video my name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.